your Bibles, Genesis. We'll go there. I want to ask this to you guys this morning, but I want to proclaim it. You have a voice. You have a voice. Genesis 3.8, if you could help me in the back, that would be great. We'll put, the, we'll put the scriptures up on screen as fast as we can for you guys. Uh, thank, thank God for this message this morning, and I pray that it will, it will bring about an eternal weight of glory in someone's life this morning. <clears throat> we need a voice. There has to be a voice. And I, as the Holy Spirit in the, first, in the first chapter of Genesis is hovering over the face of the waters, it's waiting for God to speak. And let, when he spoke, he said, let there be, let there be, let there be. But in Genesis 3, 8, we, we're going to fast forward to Adam and Eve. <clears throat> in Genesis 3, 8, it's, it's talking about a, a, this voice, this voice that has to come and permeate the world. It has to come into your world. It has to come into my world. So I'm speaking to you guys about a voice, a voice that has to come. And in 3.8, it says this, that this creation that was born heard a voice. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. This is obviously after the fall. And the voice of God is now reaching out to Adam and Eve, the creation that has fallen. In verse 10, if you just go to 10 right there, it says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I heard the voice and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now jump up to 17, you guys, and you'll see uh, the track that I'm on. Genesis 3, 17. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. The error in verse 17 is that the man hearkened unto the voice of his wife instead of the voice of God. Women, can I get an amen there? Amen. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd get one or not, but church, it is, it, it, the, the situation here is we have to listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. In Genesis 22, 18, it says this, it says this about about um, Abraham in the, the calling, blessed thou, blessed art thou that has obeyed my voice. In Genesis 26, go to Genesis 26. We'll, we'll go a little further. The Lord appears to Abraham. <clears throat> in 26.5, he says this. And actually in, tw in 4, the, the scripture above it is talking about the, the national blessing that's going to be upon Abraham. Abraham. He says, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Go to the next verse. And because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Everybody say my voice. Amen. My voice. And kept my charge and my commandments and my statutes and my laws. Because of that, down through the ages, the father of faith has to believe the Lord God again. Amen. Yes, he's fallen. But if we can get back up, if God can bring to us the voice of the Lord, if you can get the word of God and it can come to you and you believe that it's going to echo in India today. And you know what it is. It's going to echo in Sri Lanka. It's going to echo in Mexico and in Ecuador and all over the earth. Then people can be saved because the voice of God is echoing throughout the ages, the eternities, and it's echoing now. And you're hearing it in West Point, Nebraska this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. That's proof positive that God's not dead, but he's risen. But he's still calling men. He's still calling people to preach the gospel. And he's still causing you guys to rise up as the messengers and the ministers of this era and bring the gospel to the known regions. A amen? The four corners of the earth is on you guys to get the gospel out. It's not on me. I'm doing what I can do. But it's on you guys to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen this morning. You have a voice, and you're going to see that in a second. And if you'll just obey the voice of God, which is the word of God, everything's going to change. Go to the book of Matthew, the great book of Matthew this morning. Chapter 3, we're going to pick up there with our text. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When you're there, say amen. amen. In this passage, one of my favorite passages of all time, because there's a man of God that's spoken of here named John the Baptist. Anybody heard of John the Baptist in the Word of God? 
Love this character, a unique man, a very, very unique man. We're going to learn a little bit about him. And in those days, in verse 1, after 400 years of darkness under the law, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching, it says, in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice, everybody say the voice, of one crying. You know what that word cry means? It means a herald. He was a herald. Hark the herald angels sing. He was a, 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 a trumpet, so to speak. He was, he was one crying in the wilderness, in a wild, wild, desolate religious place near Jerusalem. And he said, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Out of the darkness of religion, God is faithful to raise up men and women in every era to bring a fresh revelation of God. Out of the chaos and confusion and the rebellion of sin and man's great attempt to reach God without God, that's what religion is, and that's why we hate religion. Amen? We love relationship through Jesus Christ. God will raise up people that will just believe Him by faith. People that will begin to move in faith. People that will stand up and believe this Word of God that I see you looking at here. People that will look into that Word of God and believe the Word of God and then move in the Word of God and become obedient and faithful to the Word of God. They will change the world because God is in that. Amen? He's been in it from the beginning. He's, he's going to be in it till the end. And He says here that I am the one. And I am the one... One of the voices crying in the wilderness. There came this voice. This voice was of truth. It came out of nowhere. Of life. Of compassion. It was a voice of fire. It was a voice of courage. Not of compromise. It was a voice that couldn't be stopped. It was a voice that couldn't be bought. It was a voice that couldn't be quenched or silenced. It was a voice that still echoes in the hearts of dead men made alive today. It was a voice that was cutting through every street and every synagogue. And it was causing the people of the cities to go out into the country, into a wild place, and be baptized by a man named John the Baptist. He said, why in the world are you baptizing men? Are you the Christ? Are you Jesus Christ? Are you the Christ that should come? Are you the one? Or are you Elijah? You guys, they, they had looked at this man who was calling people to repentance with such a fresh voice. A man that was appealing to the poor and the broken and the contrite and the humble and the penitent. And he was causing them to come into a repentance, preparing the way to receive the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Just when Jerusalem couldn't get any worse, God raises up that voice. Just when America couldn't get any, any worse, God raises up a voice, amen, that cannot be bought. Somebody say amen. amen. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, maybe he's a voice that cannot be bought. Amen? It doesn't matter. In, you study revival in every age. There's a, God raises up a, a, a man or a people around that man that will stand for truth and righteousness, and he'll turn the whole nation back to God. John Wesley said, give me ten men that love nothing but God and hate nothing but sin, and we'll turn all of England back to God. And they did. Hallelujah, if God can find that voice. Go to John chapter 1, verse 6, and we're going to prove it to you today. John chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. <clears throat> I love how this reads out. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Wow. Think about it. Think about it, church. I wonder if we could put our name in that blank. There was a man sent from God whose name was Steve. Look at this. Verse 7. Let's read it together. This man came for a witness. To bear witness of the light. That all through him might believe. Think about this. Somebody that was so full of, of, of the voice of God, of, of, that, the, that the church, the, the religious, the world, they mistook him to be the Christ. The ultimate goal, to become like Jesus. This, this person had become close, so close, that the Pharisees and the Jews of that time, <clears throat> they thought that he might be the one, the prophet, the one that was coming. 
As we look at our passage, we discover John the Baptist, he's speaking, he's speaking, and, and John knows God has called him for a mission. I want to ask you this morning, do you know that God has called you for a mission? Do you know, every single one of you in this room, do you believe that God has called you for a mission? And that mission is to be the voice. The voice of, of one that's crying in the, in the wild places of this earth. The places where are hostile to the gospel. They, maybe they've accepted and embraced religion, but they haven't found relationship with Jesus Christ. This is John's mission, and it hasn't changed. And it's for every single one of us today. And God is still looking for people to rise up and become that voice in this era and in this hour. And if you're still saving young people, God's not done. Amen? Amen. If you're still stirring and saving people all around, God is not done. The voice that will cry out that Jesus is coming. I want to ask you guys, will you be that voice today? John the Baptist was so righteous and he was so holy. In verse 19, look at this. They say, this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Question mark. And he confessed and denied, but confessed, I am not the Christ. In the Luke 3.15 passage, it says, All men mused in their hearts of John the Baptist, whether he was the Christ or not. My God, he was so close to Jesus. So close to Jesus. This voice, this voice, Dylan, this voice, this voice of God, this voice, this echo that, that is burst into the darkness of this world, this voice that sits upon many waters, this voice, the voice of your God, the voice of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 18, 13, it says, The Lord also thundered in the heavens. And the highest gave his voice. It says, hailstones and coals of fire poured out as he spoke. In Psalm 29, 3, it says, The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. In Psalm 29, 4, it says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Have you guys heard the voice of the Lord? Has it echoed to your heart? Has it shook you to the core like it shakes the earth when he speaks? The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. It divides the flames. It shakes the wilderness. It causes the hinds to calve. Discovers the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. In Psalm 46, 6, it says, The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. God uttered his voice and the earth melted. The power of the voice of God. The power of the voice of God caused, at some point, God walked into to your life. You heard the voice of God, and somewhere, Sam, your heart melted before a holy God. At one time, if you're born again in this room today, you had an experience where God crushed you by His Word, and He brought life to you. Amen? He opened up His voice through the Word of God and changed your very existence by His grace. Amen? I want to ask you, have you heard this voice today? How close to you is this voice, His holiness, His righteousness? And have you heard this voice today? John knows his identity. He says, I'm not the Christ. He knows full well that he's not the Christ. He knew that Jesus was coming. He knew the mission was to ready people's hearts to receive the Lord. And he knew he was chosen. The Bible says in the, in the book of Luke, and we won't take time to go there, but that God was going to use this young man, even from his birth, he was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. His mom was Elizabeth. God told his dad that his name is going to be Zacharias, that his name is going to be John. And it was prophesied in Luke 1.17 that he's going to go before him, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This was going to be his mission. But I see so many parallels in that today to the mission that God's placed upon every single one of us. Number one is this. He was set aside from his mother's birth. He was chosen. Do you guys believe and know that you've been chosen before the foundation of the earth to be saved? Do you believe that today? You were absolutely handpicked by Almighty God to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? Do you believe that you're called to bring joy to many people that will receive Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen? 
Absolutely, that's a calling. It says that John was going to bring back uh, many will he bring back to the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now, who is Elijah? Anybody remember who Elijah was? He was the most dominant prophet of the Old Testament. They call him the prophet of fire. He's the one that called down fire from heaven. He said, choose this day whom you're going to serve. If it be Baal, serve Baal. If it be God, then serve God. This man of God slayed 400 false prophets. He, he couldn't be bought off. He stood in the face of everyone, and, and he was going to preach the gospel no matter what. He was a called man of God. Amen? He said that John the Baptist was going to be in this kind of a mode. They were both, both going to be plagued by uh, demon spirits all around them. And Elijah, interesting, he was, never dies. He's one of those characters, Tom Reiser, that has never died in the Bible. Remember that? He was caught up in, in, in a chariot that picked him up. Vienna, think about this. Imagine you're walking upon the, the you're walking, you're, and, and one day a chariot comes down from heaven and just picks you up in it, and all of a sudden you're up to heaven. My gosh, can you imagine what that was like? And as he's going up to heaven, he just flings off his coat, and that mantle floats back down to the ground, and Elisha picks it up and picks off right where he left off. That's how we've got to be. We've got to be ready for the coming of the Lord. But guess what? He shows up later in Scripture. Elisha shows up again in Scripture. Where does he show up, you guys? Transfiguration. Now listen, Jesus is, goes up on a mountain with his disciples. And, and all of a sudden, Elisha shows up again with another character. Anybody know who the other character was? Moses. Moses gave us what? Moses gave us the law. Elijah was the prophet. Jesus fulfilled all the law and the prophets, right? Jesus stood before those two men, was transfigured, was changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and he stood before the entire word of God, and he said, I am that I am. Amen. I'm the completion of this word of God. I am the voice crying in the wilderness. And it said a voice spoke from heaven. A voice spoke from heaven and said, believe him. You don't need to believe Moses anymore. You don't even need to believe uh, Elijah, but you do need to believe the Son of God. Amen. He was the completion, the great I am that stood before the law and the prophets in fulfillment. Here's another interesting topic. Uh, Moses was died and he was buried. Wasn't that right? Yeah. The devil wanted to know where, right? His bones still to this day cannot be found because they would have built a shrine to him. You know, so Moses represents the death. He needed to be resurrected, right? Elijah represents those that have been taken or caught up. Amen. Speaking of the rapture of the church. Amen. So Jesus stands before uh, the, the Old Testament law and the Old Testament prophet. He stands before those that have gone on in the faith and those that will be taken up without death upon this earth. And he says, I am the word of God. Amen. Amen. He, he fulfills it all. For he fulfills Thessalonians that some will be the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then that which remains shall be caught up together. Amen. Jesus is saying, I am everything. I am the word. I am the voice. I will speak from the ages and God's endorsing and from heaven. And God is saying from this moment on, you believe my son. Amen. You just believe God who fulfills the whole law and the prophets forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Was he Elijah? No. He said, I'm not Elijah, but I am the one. I am one voice that has been crying out. Go to first, actually go to John 1 verse 23. I want you guys to see this. Praise God, we've got time. Let's take a break right now. Everybody do this. Shake the turkey off right now, okay? Shake it, shake it off. Don't fall asleep in this room. We're going we're gonna to get into some good stuff. <clears throat> John 1, 23. You ready? Say amen. amen. He says, I am the voice. Everybody say the voice. The voice. Of one. He's just one. Mm -hmm. Crying in the wilderness. The word voice there means the sound of uttered words or a herald. John was a voice. He had a distinctive message. And it was, it, this is what it was. This is Isaiah 43, and it's also this. It is, make straight the way of the Lord. What does that mean? 
Dale, I'll give five bucks if you tell me what that means. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait, I gotta have the five bucks first, don't I? <laughs> make straight. It means to make level or plain. Tom Reiser, let's plane this thing out towards level. The way means a traveled road. Make plain a traveled road so that people know how to get to Jesus Christ. Amen. Make straight this traveled road. That's what it means. I'm breaking down the Greek. In other words, it says there were obstacles in the way. There's things like religion that had to be beat off. He became a steamroller. Have you ever seen a steamroller, what it does with that big, huge wheel that just circles and goes over? You know what it does? It flattens everything in its path. It crushes religion, it crushes this, it crushes that, and it makes straight the way so that Jesus can just ride in on a donkey. Amen? That's what his work was. He was preparing the way of the return of, of Christ, of Jesus Christ the first time, and we're doing it the second time. Amen? The gospel and your calling and my calling is to make straight. He was the voice of one, but I want to tell you guys there's more than one in this room today. Amen? There's more than one with the exact same calling, and that's to stir the world for God. He was the steamroller. John was a voice preparing the people. John knew that Jesus was coming, and his mission was to get people ready. Is that our mission today? Absolutely. Is it what burns in your heart to do, to tell the whole world? Are you scheming new ways as you lay your head upon the pillow at night? How can I reach the world for Jesus Christ? What means could I use now to come up with a way to reach more people for Jesus Christ, to speak the gospel that will set men free, to change their lives, to have them come from death unto life, to see the risen King of kings and the Lord of lords? Church, that's what we're called to do. Somebody say amen in the house of God. Amen. Dear God, he had a voice, and you have a voice, and I have a voice. We all have a choice whether we're going to heed the word of God and follow it. or We're going to use the fact that we've been chosen or we're going to neglect the gifts that are upon us. You have a voice this morning. You've got to know it. And you're not just one person. Trevor, you're not just one little boy. You're a special little boy. Vienna, you're not just one beautiful little girl. You're a special little girl. And God's raising you up and he's putting this, he's allowing this voice, this voice, the voice that comes from God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the voice that comes through the Bible. And he's, going, he's coming after your heart. Camden, he's coming after your heart. He wants your heart. He wants to know you. He wants to get inside. And you're not insignificant. There's not one human being in this place. Dale Greaser, you're not 107. You're only in your 90s. Amen? You're a young man for God. There's things that you need to do. Shelly, you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. You're not insignificant, cutting that hair down there, making my hair look good. Nuh-uh. There's more to your calling. It's to share Jesus with every other person. Amen? Now look at this. It doesn't matter your size, your stature, your background, your upbringing. It doesn't matter your status, your weight, or your height. God has made you special. He's made you beautiful. He's designed you different. Everybody say, I'm different. I'm different, I'm different than everybody else. God, I'm different than everyone, and that's good. Aren't you glad that we don't all look alike, act alike, talk alike? The, the world doesn't need another Aaron Tremble. It doesn't need another Alex Meyer. There's, that's one. <laughs> we just needed one. <laughs> and Marla said amen. <laughs> but you have family, and you have influence. And we've got one life to live. It'll soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. I've looked, I've looked, I've delved, God, what's the most important thing that I could do to be of service to you in this earth? And he keeps pointing me to the word and the proclamation of the gospel. I believe that's not just on me, but that's on every single person in this room. Amen? That Jesus said the best thing that you could do is lay your life down and forget the other stuff and to follow after God and to proclaim it to the little groups, big groups, and whatever else will happen. Amen? In the Lord's way. We're not insignificant. We're not just one. We're many. And as I said before, Blake, there are multitudes. I'm talking about millions of people on planet Earth right now. I heard that there's like 600 million people that are baptized with the Holy Ghost just this last year. 600 million people. That's a heck of a lot of people that have been stirred for God. Amen? Dear God is moving upon the face of the waters. He's saving people. He's stirring people. There's not a week that doesn't go by where I don't hear of a new person coming to Christ. And let's pray that this girl's the next one. Amen? 
Praise God. I don't even know. I don't watch this, but there's a, there's a TV show called The Voice, right? Anybody ever seen it? I've not seen it, but you have. Ariana, is it good? Do you watch it a lot? Okay. Well, I, is it true that they have three people on a panel that get to decide whether you have a good voice or not? Well, I heard it was three. But did you know there's three people on a panel yeah. sitting way up high? Yep. Yeah. And they've empowered the voice. They've empowered your voice whether you can squeak or not. Did you know that? Whether you can sing a lick or not, they've empowered your voice. Uh, on the day of Pentecost and every other day. You can have a day of Pentecost every morning. Amen. You can be so filled with the Holy Spirit that God can change you. He, they can anoint your voice. Those three in that panel up there have decided already judicially that you are worthy of being filled with His Spirit and His power, the Spirit and life of Jesus Christ. Amen? That you can know Jesus personally. Amen? And that you, God can use you to change the world for Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear God has said it. He's spoken it and I choose to believe it. I am the voice of one. You say, I'm just one. Well, together we're so, so very many. There were 650, I don't know where Dylan went to, but there's 650 athletes last, last week or the week before in Grand Island, and many of them got saved under the gospel at FCA. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. God's moving among coaching staffs. He's moving all over the place. God's moving. He, 200 and some women at a women's conference. We went to the Freedmen Conference. There was 5,000 men when that was going strong. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, if one will chase 1,000 and two will chase 10,000, what can 5,000 men do when they come together in Christ? What can two or more or three get together when they come together in Christ? What, what power and what dynamite can happen when we come together in the Lord Jesus? We simply need men and women that are brave enough to preach this gospel. This voice was definitive. It was strong. And this was the message. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the one behind me, he's going to save. Amen. He's going to save the entire world. Anybody that will ever put faith and trust in him, the one that I'm lead blocking for, all you football guys, the one that I'm paving the way for, He's going to save you to the uttermost. Are you with me, Caleb? He's going to steamroll. He's going to touch your hearts and, and change you forever. He's going to put you in a church, the church of the newborn. The church of the new creation. I want to ask every young person in this room today. Are you born again? Are you born again? Caleb, you born again. Trevor, i got to ask you point blank. You born at Camden, you born again. Vienna, everybody that's in this room, now the oldest, should I go down, down the line with the oldest? Are you guys born again? Have you, been, have you been bought by the blood of Jesus? Have you given your heart and life? Do you know the difference between dead religion, which is just us playing games in the morning, which is a waste of your time, and you shouldn't be here if it's dead religion, but do you know that, that our hearts can burn when we walk with Jesus? Like on the road to Emmaus, did not our hearts burn for Jesus Christ when he came in? And church, I want to tell you that you've got to get back to that love of God. Amen. That first love of God where he's burning just like you first got saved. And we need to go back to that place. We need to find an altar. Amen. We need to go back to that place where our hearts did not burn when we spoke with this man. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm just getting off my, my message today, but I... I'm, I'm sitting there with my girls at night. I posted this on Facebook a little while ago, but little Kristen, you know how I got this message? Little Kristen was asking me to read the Bible. I said, let's, she was going to start in Genesis. I said, let's start in John. She's six years old. I said, let's start to read this. And we just went through every single scripture. Just, Dad, what does that mean? We'd go about four or five words. And, Dad, what does that mean? Dad, what does this mean? Dad, what does this mean? And as I explained it, and I would animate it for her, if you can believe that in her bedroom, just animating <laughs> the gospel to her, she said, Dad, I get it, and I love this, and I love this time that we have together. Yeah. 
I said, little girl, you've got a great heavenly father, right? But you've got an animated one by God, an earthly father that loves you. And this, as, as we got to the part, part about, about, as we got to the part about being a voice of one crying in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit spoke to me through Kristen and gave me this message that I'm speaking to you today. Amen? And I just thought, what a lovely thing that as I share this gospel with my daughter, the Holy Spirit reveals to me that this voice of the ages has come to speak to every man. And we are the bl most blessed, I could say lucky, but we're the most blessed people on the earth to have this gospel being preached this morning. Amen? Amen. We're not in hiding. We're not in, we're not in North Korea. We have the ability to congregate and to love one another, to take communion. Church, this is the greatest thing that we could ever know. And this voice is not done speaking. It's not done because God's not done anointing and filling every one of you. And if he can fill 120, he can send them out. Amen? <clears throat> the voice of the Lord spoke to a man named Isaiah. And Isaiah threw up the hands and he said, Here I am, Lord. Use me. That has to be us. The voice of the Lord is still speaking. Uh, Jonathan Nickerson's not here, but he said the voice of the Lord has spoken to him. Hunter Bowers over here, he says the voice of the Lord has spoken to him. The voice of the Lord has spoken to you too without, without a doubt, and there's, there's more that I'm thinking of. Justin Peters, the voice of the Lord has spoken. And guess what? They all want to be preachers. I remember when it was Joe, Michael Kirch, and Steve Sweat. <laughs> And they all want to be preachers. And I just love it, church. Aren't you glad that this, this voice is still crying out in the wilderness and it's pulling men out like Ethan Burke? This voice has reached him and he's turned 200 people in, in Wayne State and stirred that world for God. And now he's taking it to India. And this gospel is still raising up men and women. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God that Jesus is alive. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And we'll just hearken to this voice. If we'll hearken to this voice of God, God will move the mountains in our lives. Praise God. When he says, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said Isaiah the prophet. There's another scripture I want you to bring up today on John the Baptist that I've never studied before, and it was this one. Luke 7, 28. Let's go there on the screens this morning. Luke 7, 28. Maybe you guys have studied it out, but I had never really looked at it, but it popped last night. And it says, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But this is the part that intrigues me. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. What does that mean? Wow, John the Baptist is pretty, you know, if you're, the, if you're the greatest born of woman, I'd say that's pretty high accolade. But then Dan comes along. In the kingdom of God. And Jesus is saying he's greater than John the Baptist. Wow. This commentary I'm going to dig into a little bit. It says this. <clears throat> Greater in position and privileges in the fullness of the gospel are you. That was John's position under the law. John was literally the, 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 the stepping stone of, from the law to the gospel. And so John was hand chosen for that time period to be the one that would prepare the way for the gospel. <clears throat> this is interesting. John could only have a measure and he had fullness of the Spirit. But now the least believer can have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Right? In John 7, 14, Luke, Acts 2, right on down the line, you, you people can have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Just like John the Baptist had. 
Men could only have certain gifts in the Old Testament, but now every last believer can have the gifts of the Spirit in their life. Amen? Every single one of you guys can have the gifts of the Spirit. I back it up with Scripture. Many other blessings, the gospel pro promises, which could have never happened before to a person like John the Baptist. But under the dispensation of the gospel of grace, God has made us ministers of the New Testament, and He has endowed every single one of us with the opportunity to have all the fullness of the God within us. He's given us the Word of God. He's given us the voice of God. He's given us the, the Holy Spirit. He's given us the peace of God. All these things, He's allowed us to have more than John the Baptist. And John was the stepping stone from the law to grace. In a, in a first Peter uh, verse, this is a, another study that I'm looking at on the side, but it says the angels are desiring to see what you have inside of you because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They're, they were created to follow and worship God. But you have something endowed in you that they don't have. And so they look on you with envy. Imagine the angels in heaven looking down and they're wondering, dear God, she's got the Holy Ghost inside of her. How does this thing work? Isn't that amazing? The things that God hath given us. I'll give you the scripture. It's 1 Peter 1.12, the last part of it. He says, he says, Unto you the gospel was preached, unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angel, angels desire to look into. You, you guys have things been endowed to you that are unbelievable. You've heard the voice of God. You have the voice, but you also have a choice. And I'm going to end it with this thought. Everybody in this room, there are two kingdoms vying for you. Every single person in this room. And if you didn't fight the devil this week, then you're not alive yet. You, you with me? There's the world, the flesh, and the devil, and they're after every single one of you. And after you did your turkey trots this week, I guarantee you stumbled and struggled in your own flesh. Is that right or wrong? That devil wants to take you down. He wants to take you out. He wants to, he wants to, 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 to lie to you. He wants to do all those things. And just as sure as Adam and Eve listen to the wrong voice, we have the ability to, to listen to the wrong voice too. There's many voices out there, none without significance. This Bible tells us, this voice says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This vo voice says we've broken and transgressed God's righteous law. We learn that from Moses in the Ten Commandments, right? We learn it from the prophets, and the prophets are crying out repentance. We learned that from Elijah, our fiery prophet this morning. We learned it from a guy named John the Baptist who moved in the spirit and power of Elijah, bringing us to the one who said, I am. And we heard the voice of God the Father look down and say, from now on, listen to this one. Or this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Trinity spoke from heaven above, telling us to look on Jesus Christ. Young people, old people, everybody in the sound of my voice, if this goes out by radio, have you listened to the voice of God, the voice of thunder, the voice of power, the voice that is, that is pummeling through even the airwaves? Church, that we need a Savior this morning. There's no good men. Everyone's broken the law. And church, we need Jesus Christ to fulfill that. Amen. Which one of you guys aren't a, haven't lied before? Which one of you guys haven't stolen before? Which one of you guys haven't lusted before in your heart? Those are three of the Ten Commandments. If God judged you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, which one of you guys is going to be declared innocent? And which one's going to be declared guilty? Every single one of us is guilty before God because I've done every single one of those things before and after I became a Christian. Are you listening to me? This voice, this voice from God says that our, we've got a bad heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, and fornications, and murders, and thefts, and covetousness, and wickedness, and deceit, and lasciviousness, and an evil eye, and blasphemy, and pride, and foolishness. Matthew 7, 21. 
Is that truth? It's in red letters. Man, I struggle with those things still. They come knocking on my door. Anybody else with me? All these things come from within and defile the man. Church, that's, not even, that's before there's a devil. Steve, these things I battle with from within. Okay? The mind, it says, the mind is corrupted. In Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and the imagination and the, and the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. So God raises up a, bit, a man who builds a big boat, and he causes it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. And I'm telling you, there's another one coming, but this time it's fire. If we listen to this voice, you guys, if we listen to this voice, we learn that we need Jesus, that we need a Savior. And yet we hear the, the God of heaven and earth bellowing even from the cross. And Jesus, now the vocal point, He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, this voice. He cries, He cries with a loud voice from the cross, says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And God, it, it pleased the Lord, it pleased God, pleased God to bruise him instead of you to let you go free, to let you have mercy, to let you have grace, to let you have. Church, he came down from the mighty, glorious splendors of heaven. He subjected himself his whole life. He was born in a major, li lived a perfect life. He was tempted on all fronts. He suffered ridicule, pain, agony. He became a curse for all of us. He took our sins. He drank the bitter cup. He experienced the wrath of God. He was separated from God upon the cross, yet he was buried, yet he was resurrected miraculously. He arose from the grave. The stone was rolled away, and Jesus Christ is alive today and that voice is still speaking today. Come unto me, all ye that are weary, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, drink a thirst of this gospel, and I will save your soul. Church, we've got a God that is the greatest thing upon planet Earth. He's the greatest thing in the universe, and His voice is still reaching and stretching. Have you heard His voice? Don't let that voice be muffled by the cares of this life. Don't let it be muffled by Black Friday. Don't let anything shut this voice out. Instead, get into a place where you're like this. Dear God, what are you saying? And here's the truth. Here's the truth, you guys. When I do this, <clears throat> give, give me the cup on the air. When I do this to the Holy Ghost, and I get to a place where I'm actually seeking Him, and I put, you know, I, I grab a cup and put it towards the door, and I'm like, what are you saying? Whenever I get to the place like that, Grandma, I'll tell you the truth. You know what I hear? I hear somebody speak right back. <sighs> Dear God, bring us into that place. Bring us into that place where we can hear the voice of the Lord in this hour. Bring us back where we have the witness of the Spirit. Bring us back where it's not just one voice crying in the wilderness, but it's so very many that a church would rise up and these little, this little group, how can this little group of people pull off the women's conference? I hear it all the time. How did David kick Goliath in the... <laughs> Come on, church. You've been given a voice. You've been given a choice. It's to follow God with all your heart and soul. I have to do that daily. I need Him this week. I need Him this morning. I need His mercies now.